In this video, we're going to be installing RetroKai's magic screen for the Sega Game Gear. Alright, so let's dive right in and remove these four screws holding the CFL housing. Next, we're going to stab these solder points to divorce the backlight from the board. I mean, 30 years was a good run, but nothing lasts forever. Next, we're going to apply a little pressure on the fuses to break them loose. Let's prep this ribbon cable for removal. I'll be using a hot air station this time, since the LCD is in good condition. If you don't have a hot air station, a knife solder bit with a glob of solder will do the trick as well. Prepping this board for Retro Kai's magic screen is way less intimidating than the Mick Will screen we did last video. The first component we're going to tackle is a resistor 56. Just wetting our iron with solder, we can soak it up like a sponge. This next resistor, R57, comes off the same way. Next, let's tackle this coil, L2. I'm gently tugging the coil beside our removed resistors while heating the two legs to break it free. With our three components removed, let's cut the far left 34 volt wire shown here. Let's not forget the other end as well. We wouldn't want to short anything. Like the McWill LCD, we're going to need to add a jumper from the bottom of R23 to T10 like so. This clever little board solves some of my issues that a McWill install entails. Simply align the corresponding pin 1 marks. The top left solder point is the second pin from the top left if you have it aligned correctly. I'm temporarily taping this board down so it doesn't get away from us while soldering. All the marked spots on the Retro Kai board need to be soldered onto the main one. Soldering two boards this way isn't a typical solder job. I had more luck soldering uphill rather than going downhill and making a bunch of bridges. Of course, Flux is the unsung hero for solving that. If all goes to plan, your board should look something like this. Next, let's attach some wires for the backlight. This screen requires us to attach the wires to pin 2 and 3 of the contrast wheel like so. Next up, let's attach some wires for the button options. This is similar to the McWill kit where we attach them to the right side of C38 and to the left of C37. Let's shove this board between the cartridge connector and the Game Gear's main board to prep the LCD. Since it isn't anchored yet, let's add some tape to prevent it from getting loose. This mounting bracket is probably the worst I've ever encountered. The screw holes can easily be stripped, so do not torque them at all. This mounting bracket leaves a lot to be desired, and is my biggest gripe about the product in general. And this LCD exhibits the same lopsided black border that McWill has. Since this console is modded, let's give it a brand new shell no one has ever touched. This Game Gear is the same one that was used in the VA1 recap video. And there you have it, a quality LCD screen with half the installation hassle of a McWill. And that about does it for this video. I have to say, installing this magic screen was way easier than the Mick Will. If you like this video, or if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below.
And as always, I'll see you next time.